Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayan, and this is The Groom, and we watched The Black Phone, which is uh, based off of a short story by Joe Hill. If you don't know already, that's one of Stephen King's offspring. And we, we actually watched a movie in the theater while it's like still going through its theatrical run, so I'm pretty proud of us. <laughs> I'm proud of us, too. <laughs> it's, uh... It was good. Yeah. It was it was good. I was apprehensive about it, but I didn't watch any trailers for it, so I went in like with no expectations and no knowledge of any of the trailers, and I really liked it. I think the the only trailers I saw like before we went to see it were the ones that were on TikTok and all I remember was that Ethan Hawke is in it and there's like some weird lower mask and I was mm -hmm. like, "Okay, Obviously, there's a phone involved, so... A black phone. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't expect this to be set in the 70s, which it was. And I, I think they did a really good job. I really like the costuming in the movie. Like, um, it, it, it said it kind of like, like, well, like five, six minutes into it. It said what the year was. But you just looked at, like, the just, like, the setting of it. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely the yeah, 70s. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool the way they shot it, I think. It gave it that, like, Texas Chainsaw grittiness. And they did mm -hmm. shout out Texas Chainsaw in the movie, which I thought was great. And Enter the Dragon. Yes, and Enter the Dragon. Two completely rad movies. All right, so what's the synopsis of her film? So we watched the trailer, like, the actual official trailer to kind of see what we could talk about. And it's set mostly with Finn and Gwen two kids growing up with their dad who is unfortunately an alcoholic and just Raging like alcohol. super sensitive about noises which I get but like to a really large extent and they're just going about their days going to school uh, we get the impression that Finn is a bit of an outcast and he's got a lot of bullies but like he also has Gwen to like back him up which is great and there's Immediately, one of the, the kids is missing, and we get from the trailer that this is like a epidemic going on in their town. There's been a string of children going missing and not found, and I like the way Gwen put it, where they're like, oh, do you think they're going to find them? And she's like, not the way that they want to, which, like, that's real dark for, like, such a little kid to say. She was not great she was though. amazing, but... um. <laughs> Unfortunately, as we see in the trailer, Finn is one of the latest catches from the Grabber. Who they? Mm -hmm. It seems like the kids have kind of either gotten that from the newspapers or it's like their just their moniker for this baddie. Who is a part-time magician, which is why you don't trust magicians. No. Never. Ever. Unless they're the magician that was my high school... Uh, he was um or Mr. The same high Mr. School Didra. He was like the Was he the shop teacher? The shop teacher. And so he, he did, did do magic. He did magic part time at Pastabella. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> shout out shout out to Mr. Didra. Shout out to Mr. Didra. Thank you for letting me make a Beavis clock when I was in your class. I may still have it somewhere. I love shop class. But anyways, the black phone, where does that play in? We see in the trailer a lot that it's ringing and he kind of like the grabber is kind of like, don't worry about that. That hasn't worked since I was a kid. Yeah, he said it's static electricity is what makes it ring. Yeah, it's one of those ye old rotary phones. So like maybe that's true. I don't know. We used to have one of those in our basement growing up. My grandparents had one in the barn at the farm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, Finn is trying to get out of the clutches of the grabber and Gwen from the trailer is getting a bunch of clues in her dreams which she's telling the detectives like hey I saw this happen they end up questioning her because she was talking to the sister of one of the previous kids saying that she had a dream where she saw black balloons and this was a detail that they never leaked to the public so like how would she know that how would she know that there's a whole intricate backstory about how she knows that but i feel as though we should probably leave it off here because i don't want to spoil too much um i 
what did you like the most about this movie? I really, really liked the kid actors, which is, like, a huge thing for me to say. Like, I'm usually the biggest critique, yeah, of child actors. And I felt when in particular, her acting was, like, guttural. There was one part where she was getting, like, disciplined. Corporal punishment. Yeah, she was getting hit with a belt in the kitchen and just... The way she was screaming and crying and reacting, like, I wanted to cry because I felt all this little girl's pain. Just, I I wanted to help her so bad. And even the, the actor that played Finn at one, like, he's reacting so logically, which I found kind of surprising mm-hmm. for, like, a kid, especially, yeah. like, a teenage boy. But then also, you got to realize his situation he's had to like parent his father essentially like he goes home and takes care of his father on friday nights yeah yeah the one thing is she goes to a friend's house and stays over on friday nights and she and she's like hey no i'm staying over at so-and-so's house and he's like okay i'll take care of dad yeah which Which is is heartbreaking because he's he has to take care of his parent at such a young age when it should Mm -hmm. be you know vice versa which is so sad And the more I was thinking about it during the movie, like, man, like, a regular teenage kid would not act like this. And I was like, well, he's really not gotten a chance to be a teenage kid. kid." And it seems like Gwen's kind of trying to fake being a kid because she probably doesn't understand how to be one either. But Mm. her friend Cindy keeps inviting her over, so she probably feels obligated like it's the normal thing to do. So just oh my god there's certain parts where these characters break down and i wanted to break down right with them i felt for them so much like it was very painful yeah i the Mm -hmm. the child the the child actor is probably the best i've seen since it yeah since the remake is the best child actors i've seen since it but i'd say it or stranger things like i love the kids in stranger Stranger things which i found out like they're not really kids anymore. They're like in their twenties. Yeah, I was gonna say they're the in like one their guy 20s. that plays Steve is like freaking thirty. All right, go Steve. Like you look great. Um, I I will oh, tell wait, you. Bonus. I also really liked the effects. We didn't get too many of them, but they were very good. I was very happy. I really liked Ethan Hawke in this as the main, as the main, uh, as the main villain. He was so good. Who knew he could be such a good villain, like, in uh, this Moon movie Knight, and he, in Moon, Moon Knight. Knight? He was great. Yeah, I hate him in what, Moon Knight. I was about to say, and yeah, you're supposed to. He's such um, a bastard. Yeah, he was, like, I, I thought his acting was great. I really loved what they did with the masks. Yeah. Where he was one character when he wore the smiley mask, and he turned into a different person when he was wearing the, like, frowny mask. Yeah bottom part of the mask because his mask splits in two pieces. I like, feel like even those so were like cool. sub characters when he mm-hmm. had like it just on the top, just uh-huh. on the bottom. And I love how it it depending on what variation of the mask that he wore was what kind of like kind of person he was, mm-hmm. which I absolutely love that. And it takes a really good actor to do something like that. Yeah. It reminded yeah. me a lot of um Split when he was the yes. different when he was the different characters depending <laughs> on what he was. Um, so I, like he's I bringing was, him down a train. He's like, it wasn't me. It was Patricia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I really, I really liked him in this uh, the movie. I thought he, I thought his acting was great. His mannerisms were amazing. Um, I really liked the realistic way that he could kidnap the kid and the science that he used. Yeah. Science. He used science to kidnap a child. He literally blinded him with science. Yes. So that was I, I really I really I really like the you know the child the child acting in this was amazing. Even Finn's friend who gets abducted right before him, he was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's a really brutal fight oh, scene in this. With the two kids, oh my that god! That you think they're gonna like pan away a lot sooner? Like they pan away, but then they pan back, and you're just like, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> bullshit. Freaking, oh my god, it's great. Yeah, so, the so, dynamic between Finn and Gwen made me really think of the dynamic between the two kids in Psycho Goreman. Like, Gwen was a little bit more there for her brother than the sister was in Psycho Goreman. Like, she was kind of a bitch. Like, a self-centered bitch. Whereas Gwen, like, there's a point where 
Finn's getting his ass kicked and she comes out of nowhere and you think she's like just gonna try to break the fight up and this girl comes with a rock like she's ready like i loved that and that just makes me think more like she's she's not a kid like she is trying to be the protector that they both should have had which is so depressing makes me so like i feel so bad for these fictional characters so what did you not like about the movie um Sometimes I felt like the pacing was a bit off while Finn is in one location only. It's just, I wanted more things to happen, but then as soon as I was kind of getting taken out of the scene, then there would be a fucking jump scare that would just like, like there was one that I was just kind of like, like it got me. Like it was good though. Like they were pure jump scares. They were good. They went with the, they went along with, the plot of the movie they Mm -hmm. weren't just there to be jump scares but they were jump scares that worked into the movie yeah which is what a jump scare should be so all right i I think it's kind of funny that there is element of shine in this movie since it is joe hill and we know who Mm -hmm. his dad is like that makes sense I, i enjoyed that a whole lot yeah um and there were some really funny parts in this movie i'll tell you what i didn't like i they went a little bit into the mom's backstory that the mom had some type of shine or was a seer or was some type of psychic yada 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 and they went into it like just a little bit just the tip and they just didn't they didn't even go back to it anymore we don't know the circumstances around her death we know, you know. that she ended like she checked out yeah, but we don't know if, if that's really what happened or if that's just what the kids are being told. That's what the, you know, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. It was, there's a whole lot of speculation there. I would really love to know more about her because that would, knowing more about her would be able, to, would let us know a little more about both kids' background because both kids end up being gifted in some in yeah. some way. Hence, you know, how he in the trailer could hear one of the other victims through the black phone. Which, which in the trailer you see is not connected to any, like, phone line or anything. Yeah. He, he literally pulls it up and he's like, oh. So, uh, all right, what would you rate it? I'd probably give this, like, probably, like, a three out of five. I really, really liked it. I would definitely watch it again. I'm probably going to be quoting this movie for like a good while like there's some really the funny with her and the here. cops was so oh good oh my god the part so she <laughs> she's feeling attacked like they're saying well this detail how did you know this detail and she's like do you think i'm the grabber like she's a small child and um cat there's a cat there's a cat behind Hello, you don't honey. roll back <laughs> And she just, like, kind of lets loose, and there's whom I'm assuming is the principal sitting behind her, like, Gwen! No! <laughs> and she's, what did she call them? The fucking fart knockers. This is amazing. Like, that's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> or when she's, like, doesn't quite understand um, the the gift or the power that she has, that she can see things in her dreams, and it gives her clues. So she's praying to Jesus and, like, pulls out, like, a little crucifix and a Jesus fish and something else from her dollhouse and she's praying and she doesn't get a dream at all the one time and she pulls everything out and she's just like what the fuck Jesus that was my what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Again, now, now you give me nothing yeah it was so um, funny I would give this a 4 out of 5 it had good comedy it had a little comedic parts in it like what what we just mentioned the two protagonists the brother and sister were great the villain ethan hawk was amazing um like you said the jump scares were good it was scored very well the music was yeah. great in this the music really set the mood for because it like starts out all happy him playing baseball and it's like a 70s like like a folk rock 70s song and everything's great and everything's grand and then when like He's dealing with the bullies. It's more ominous, and when you see the the grabber, when you see it gets more ominous when you see his van and stuff like that. So, I, I really, really liked it. I was pleasantly surprised because I really, uh, I really didn't have high hopes for this movie, and it definitely surprised me. So this gave me like 
sinister vibes and well, like some vibes from like exorcism of emily no Rose. like the conjuring it gave me some silence of the lamb vibes like i feel like anyone making a movie where people are trapped in a basement somewhere like you're gonna have this the, the silence of the lambs vibes yeah, he come he comes down the stairs oh he was so weird coming down he the stairs. He was so weird. It reminded me of uh, Walking Phoenix's Joker coming down the stairs in the movie. Yeah. And just like, what are your intentions with these children? <laughs> the best. He brings him eggs. Okay. <laughs> and he goes, what did you put in him? Is it poison? He goes, salt and pepper. And that, that was his answer. Yeah. It was, and he's like, you're already salt. down here. Yeah. He's like, there's no need to drug you. You're already down here. Touche. <laughs> All right, tell them where to find us. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok That's at Reanimator. Drink. You can find the reviews solo and with this guy on the fart or mm, on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. I haven't done an outro in a while. You can like, find all the fart knockers. You can find me on the fart knockers. You can what find the fuck, me. Jesus. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and TikTok and Twitch under Repeat Viking. Uh, come, we stream every night. Come hang out. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good time. <laughs> the fart sighted. The fart sighted. <laughs> oh, all right. Do you guys like Faces of Death? Does anyone else still watch that? Anyone? Do you know how many people in the grocery store smiled until they looked at my shirt and they were like, "What right. the fuck is that?" I'm gonna answer my black phone. Ugh.